Welcome to Shoe Talk for October 2024. It has been a very busy month and there is a lot to go through, so let's just jump straight in. And starting off with this shoe, the Nike Zoomfly 6. Now, I'm not going to be covering this shoe on this channel. Now, I can see a lot of people asking, but I'm a Nike guy. How can I not cover this shoe? Well, it's a shoe I'm just not interested in. That This style of shoe, this super trainer, again, a term I try to use as little as I can on this channel, is just not a shoe that I need. I'm always going to pick a super shoe to do that work because you shouldn't be running every day in a super trainer or a plated performance trainer. At best, you're going to be running in it once or twice a week for workouts, for key workouts, even that. And I would even say there's a ton of really good options out there like this shoe, the Nike Pegasus Plus, that are far better tempo shoes for workouts. You should be doing more of those workouts in a non-plated shoe. You're going to get a better training effect. So I can come up with some real edge cases as to why you would need a Zoomfly 6. But generally for me, I have super shoes. I'm going to train in those and I'm going to race in those and I just don't need it. Now, back in August, I made a video about this shoe, the A6 Magic Speed 4, where I posed the question of why does this shoe even exist? Now, I was being a little clickbaity with that question. I know why I exist. The Magic Speed 4 and the Zoomfly 6 are the same shoe to me. They're completely interchangeable. They're a more durable performance trainer, tempo trainer, plated performance trainer. But again, like I said, I don't really need that shoe. They can also be budget racers for those who don't want to go all in and buy a top tier carbon plated super shoe. But I'm going to also say that now you can probably buy last year's super shoe. Even right now, the Adidas Adios Pro 3 is probably on sale because the new one came out. You can find really good prices for last year's super shoes. They're going to be a better shoe than anything like a Zoomfly or a Magic Speed 4. Specifically with the Magic Speed 4, the reason I laid so heavily into that shoe was that the Magic Speed 3 was a brilliant, brilliant shoe last year. Then ASICs, um, well, they came out with the Magic Speed 4. My thoughts are pretty clear on that shoe. But at least in Nike's case, the Zoomfly 5 was probably one of the worst Nikes that they've ever made, period. So as I said, the Zoomfly 6 is going to be an upgrade from the Zoomfly 5, but that's not saying much. So if that's a shoe you're excited about, great. If it's going to work for you and it fills a use case for you, great. But I'm just not going to be covering it on this channel. But if you're very budget conscious and you are looking for a lot of bang for your buck, especially from Nike, I don't know how you can look past this shoe, the Nike Rivalfly 4. Now, I did my initial impressions review on this about a week or two ago. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that. But this has been a very, very fun shoe for me to run in. Now, on paper, when I first put it on, I loved it. I loved the idea of a non-super foam, more traditional racing flap from Nike. We haven't had that in a long time. Yes, the Streak Fly existed, but that was still Zoom X. What makes this shoe sort of so magical is that it's not Zoom X. This is Kushlon, um, and it feels pretty standard. It feels pretty old school. It's got a Zoom Air unit in the forefoot that's uh, geared and, and you know tuned a lot like the Peg 37, so it's a little bit more aggressive than the Peg 41. You feel the Zoom Air unit in the forefoot of the shoe, but it's just a very traditional a racing flat that's really good for tempo training, for speed workouts, and for any of that stuff on track or road. I've been primarily using this as a race flat on the track when I don't want to put on spikes. And it's great because I can warm up in this shoe, I can do a set of reps in this shoe, and then I can cool down in this shoe. Or I can do the warm up, say the first set of reps, then do some easy running, and then switch to spikes for the second set of reps, and then put this back on to cool down. It's just been a really great option. For road running, this is great for 1K repeats or even one mile repeats. I've done both. It's exceptional for that. And it's just nice to have a non-super foamed, more traditional race flat option for some of this tempo work. So for $100 USD, and you can find this shoe for cheaper than that on a lot of places, including different Nike.com sites across the world. I don't know how you can look past this shoe if you're very budget conscious. It is an exceptionally fun shoe. And I think uh, it works so well because it is more traditional. It doesn't have the super foam. It doesn't have Zoom X with SRO2 foam, which is their Nike's budget foam. I don't even understand why that's in the Zoomfly uh, 6. 
This is just good current gen Kushlan foam and it just works. So if you're very budget conscious, you have a good daily trainer that you want and like, and you're looking for a tempo shoe, I would seriously look at this shoe. It's a lot of value for what you're actually paying for and it's really, really good fun to run in. Moving on, I want to point out something. So as road runners, I think we look at our super shoes, and this is a Vaporfly 3, as the fastest shoes that we can put on our feet. And this is a fast shoe, but super shoes have nothing, and I mean nothing, on track spikes. This is the Nike Victory 2. This is a super spike. This is about as super as spikes get right now. This is a fast shoe. This makes this shoe, which is a fast shoe, feel slow. I just cannot comment how fast track spikes feel. Think of it this way. If a daily trainer is a sports car and a super shoe is a race car, well, this is a fighter jet. This is just, it's something altogether different. Nailing a really good stride and, and really, really hitting a clean foot strike and a pair of spikes on a track it is something really special. And my spike content, my spike coverage of the Victory 2 did well, and I'm excited to cover spikes on this track. And I can say that I finally sourced a pair of these, Nike Dragonfly 2s. Now this has been a hard, hard spike for me to track down, because for whatever reason, it's just not here in Taiwan. I can get the Victory 2, I can get the Maxfly 2, I just can't get this spike. But I found a way to get a pair in the States. I'll have them in the next couple of weeks. So in November, expect a review of this bike. Also, I will be doing a comparison between the Dragonfly 2 and the Victory 2 because I think there's probably a lot of people looking at track spikes, especially middle distance and distance track athletes that are trying to decide between these two shoes. And I think there is going to be a massive difference. And I'm actually planning on using them in very different ways. So look for a versus video between these two as well, coming up in November at some point. Another thing I want to bring up, and this is something that hits me every six months or so, it's the recovery properties of this Nike ZoomX foam and the Vaporfly, but specifically I'm talking about ZoomX foam. Now I'm doing a lot of speed work right now. I'm doing three workouts a week. Two of those are fairly difficult track workouts. And then one is a road workout, which is tempo threshold work. So I'm putting a lot of fatigue in my legs uh, every week. And recovery, especially as a master's runner, is massive for me. And doing those workouts in this shoe, the Vaporfly 3, or this shoe, the Peg Plus, or even this shoe, the Victory 2 track spike, which, to be fair, I'm running mostly on the air units, but this is ZoomX off the toe, and you do feel the ZoomX off the toe, plus all of this is ZoomX in this shoe. And this is the same ZoomX in the track spike as what you find in the Vaporfly. But doing that work in ZoomX shoes, especially the really hard sets in the workouts, again, I couldn't be recovering between those workouts as well as I am if it wasn't in this foam. I've tried this in Lightstrike Pro. Lightstrike Pro is good, but it's probably another 24, 30 hours uh, for recovery than what ZoomX uh, requires of me. And then ASICS foams, just, they just abuse my legs. I do not recover or respond well to, Zoom, to ASICS foams, even though they are fast, but my legs pay the price. But in this shoe, it's just been great. ZoomX, again, I'm not surprised here. There's a reason I come back to Nike or there's a reason I stick to Nike and it really is ZoomX. It just is a magical foam for my legs. As I said, I'm primarily doing speed work right now, and I made a video about my plans a while back. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in that full video, but essentially I'm doing a Jack Daniels 800 plan. It's a 12 week, though it has an option to add another six weeks, so an 18 week total plan that's really geared towards a track 800, you know, a top time there. I'm in week four of the first six week chunk, which is really speed focused. I'm doing mostly 200s, some 400s, but it's mostly 200s. So it's really trying to build that top end speed. And it's quite exciting because I'm touching paces that I never thought I would be capable of touching. Um, the other day I was doing uh, some uh, a workout that was 200, 200, 400. And in the 200s, I looked down on my watch at one point and I saw 257 per kilometer as pace sub three minute kilometer pace. Now that was probably only over like 20 meters. If that, it was kind of my top end in that rep. 
But I never, ever thought of myself touching those sort of paces. And the paces that I'm holding over 200 or 400 or, you know, those are 330 or, you know, 315. I saw 310 on a rep at one point. These are paces that are exciting to touch. They're new areas for me, and I'm really enjoying this type of running. I'm also enjoying this sort of lower volume but higher intensity stuff. So three workouts a week and then three runs a week where I can kind of do whatever I want. And one or two of those runs per week I've been doing as trail runs, especially the uh, runs that come after the workout. So Monday, Tuesday are back-to-back -back workouts for me. So that Wednesday run is a trail run generally for me. And then Friday is another track workout. So Saturday has become a trail run for me too. And I'm really enjoying the trail run for the ability to kind of recover, to be able to go up and spend time on feet. And I'm spending more time on feet than I would on a road run for the same amount of effort. And I'm doing a run hike or power hike, if you want to call it. And I'm recovering. I'm building, uh, you know, balance. I'm working out stiffness in the legs and feet. I'm building strength because I'm always going up. I'm always going down. That's what I have to run here. So it feels like sort of the magic bullet in this speed plan of going up and building strength and balance and recovering and flexibility up on the trails that I can bring in with stability and power on the track. It feels really nice. And then go out and do, you know, a longer road run, which right now is about 14, 15 K, not long uh, if you're thinking in marathon terms, but for where I am right now, running about 40 miles a week or 60 kilometers a week, which is all I really need to be doing because the longest distance I'm focused on right now is a road one mile, but I'm mostly focused on a track 800, so it's even shorter. It's really a road half mile, if you will. That's all I need to be doing. And again, I'm really enjoying this running. I'm enjoying the speeds I'm touching, but I'm also enjoying just the pacing of it. So it's something I'm going to continue, I think, for some time, definitely through the fall, into the winter, and probably well into the spring, because I'm enjoying it that much. Another thing I wanted to talk about in this video was uh, some comments that I got around my review of this shoe, the Innovate Roadfly. Now, full disclosure, Innovate sent me this shoe for the purpose of review, but they're not paying me to talk about this shoe, nor do they know I'm even talking about it in shoe talk. Uh, I love this shoe. I'm running a lot in this shoe and I'm really enjoying this shoe. And uh, I think that came across in my initial impressions review of this shoe. But, and there's nothing negative about this shoe, but in the comments, uh, for this uh, shoe, a lot of people mentioned, well, what about Topo and Ultra? Well, what about Topo and Ultra? As many of you know, I was recently in the States last month, and when I was there, I was in Oregon, specifically Bend, Oregon, and I, I ran into a really great running store in downtown Bend that carried both Topo and Ultra, and I was really excited because Topo has been a shoe that has come up a lot in my comments over the years. They don't exist here in Taiwan. They're just They're just not here period at all. So I was really excited to finally see Topos in person in this running store in Bend, Oregon. But as soon as I picked them up and started to kind of look at the shoe, I was like, huh. Looking at the build quality, looking at the material selection, looking at the last of the shoe. And this is something I talked a lot about in the Roadfly review. Again, link in the description if you're interested in that. I was like, mm, yeah, I don't know about this shoe. So I ended up actually trying on the Spectre 2 and the Cyclone 2. And I'm going to say both of them were a hard, hard pass for me. Now, I know Topo are very popular amongst a subset of runners right now. I've seen the asks for me to review them on this channel quite a bit. So when I saw them in this running store, I was excited. I was going to pick them up. But after I tried them on, I realized that the fit of the uppers and the last that they use is just everything I don't like and kind of what I was talking about in the Roadfly review about foot shape lasts where they're just really wide in the forefoot, really wide in the heel, and they just draw a straight line in the midfoot and you just get a big sloppy fit. What made the topos even worse was that the material selection for the upper was really loose and baggy. It did not fit my foot. They were way too wide in the forefoot, for, especially for performance running, because I was getting, just standing in the store, getting way too much wiggle in the forefoot of the shoe. The heel cup was way too big. They just were a mess. On top of that, if that's a performance shoe, I don't want um, that bad of a fit, especially with a super foam. So Topos are probably a shoe I'm never going to cover on this channel. They just did not fit my foot. I did not like the last, I did not like the build quality, and I did not like the material selection. So probably no topos will be seen on this channel 
anytime soon unless they change drastically, which I don't think they're going to. Now, Ultra. Ultra also was in this shop, and a while back, I did try the Escalante 4. I think when it first came out, this was maybe six months ago. It might have already been out. I, I don't remember, but Ultra is here in Taiwan. And I tried the Escalante 4 because I ran in the original Escalante and in the Escalante Racer years ago, like 10 years ago, like 2012, somewhere in that range. And I didn't think much of uh, Ultra's materials at the time, but back then Ultra actually made really kind of interesting shoes. The Lone Peak was definitely the favorite uh, around trail running, especially for through hikers in, in the hiking scene. The Lone Peak was really sort of the shoe. And as far as a barefoot option that has some cushion, at least a zero drop option, the Escalante and the Escalante Racer were great. But, you know, Ultra is not the company it used to be. And when I tried on the Escalante 4, I was just like, no, this is a hard pass. Plus, I just didn't like the way the shoe looked. It looked super, super cheap on my foot. But again, that last, super wide in the forefoot, super wide in the heel, straight line in between, really sloppy fit. Just Ultra's fit in their last does, does not work. But in this shop in Bend, I got to try the Vanish Carbon 2, the newer uh, ratio. Again, same feelings. The fit of that shoe was awful for my foot, at least what I want, especially for a carbon plated super shoe, which is really what that's trying to be. So Ultra is also not a shoe or a brand that I'm probably gonna cover on this channel because they just don't fit my foot or they're just exactly the type of last and fit that I really, really dislike. So sorry for everyone who was recommending me to try ultra or topo or why don't i cover those shoes this is why they don't fit i don't like the feel of them i don't like the materials used in them and honestly with ultra ultra has not been the same company once golden harper left and really when he left for good in 2021 they're not the same company so i remember ultra from back then i respect golden harper and everything he did but they're not the same company and the last really shoe topic here will be this shoe, the Adidas Evo SL. Now, this shoe I know is popping up in certain markets. It's popping up on YouTube. There's more reviews of it. And I think a lot of people are expecting it to pop up in this channel pretty soon. Well, here in Taiwan, there is zero reference of this shoe anywhere in Adidas Taiwan. On their website, in their social media, it's nowhere. They've not mentioned it at all. So I would not expect this shoe on my feet. Uh, anytime soon, I'll be lucky to see it by spring, uh, given how the uh, supernova rise actually appeared here uh, last year. So I'm trying to make roads into Adidas. And in fact, I've got, you know, connections and pathways up to basically the top of Adidas right now, at least Adidas running, but it's still not really working out for me. So if I can get these shoes sooner, I will. I really want to cover the Adios 9, but I don't expect that one to pop up anytime soon either. So for those of you waiting on my thoughts on the uh, Adidas Evo SL, it's going to be a while because I just cannot get a pair. And lastly, looking ahead to content in November and a little bit into December, there's going to be some more reviews on this channel. There'll be a trail shoe coming up. There'll be the Dragonfly 2 track spike plus some versus videos, as I mentioned in this video. In early December, I will likely have the Nova Blast 5 because uh, ASICS is really good about releasing product here in Taiwan and stocking products. So for example, if you want a pair of Super Blasts, come to Taiwan, they're everywhere. They're just not popular here. But even though the Nova Blast series is not really the kind of shoe I like to run in, it is, I think, an important shoe for me to cover on this channel. So I definitely will have a Nova Blast 5 review and a lot of versus videos in early December on that one. Otherwise, I'll have a lot of technical and analysis content coming up. I have some running culture content, which I'm excited to finally get into because it's stuff I've been nerding out about uh, for months now in my reading and, and watching a lot of videos. So I'll finally talk about some of that stuff. And there'll be a few other surprises. The end of November, we have the total running event or TRE. So I'll do some content around that. I will not be attending TRE. But I'll be covering it from afar because there's creators there that will be, you know, covering everything. So I'll talk about the trends and some of the cool, interesting stuff that I see. Should be a really interesting show. I'm also going to do a review video of last year's theory and the predictions that I made for 2024 and check in to see how well those went. I think some of them are kind of accurate, some of them are not. So we'll see about that. So stay tuned for that. 
And once we get into December, that's going to be all sort of my year end content. So uh, if you're interested in that stuff and you're new here, subscribe, you'll see that stuff pop up in your feed. Otherwise, I have uh, memberships enabled on this channel. They've been enabled for a few months now. I've got some people who have joined me. Thank you for the support. But that's just a way of supporting what I do here on the channel. Um, I did a community post about it a while back as to why I'm doing it. I'll put a link in the description to that if you want to check that out. But by no means do you need to join the channel. But if you join the channel, it's just a way of supporting what I do here on a monthly basis a little bit more than, you know, watching the videos, liking, commenting, all that stuff. Otherwise, if you're interested in what I'm doing on a daily basis, follow me on Strava. Uh, I do post notes after pretty much every run and especially workouts about how I'm feeling and what I'm actually doing there. So if that's interesting, it's on Strava. And I do post random stuff over on Instagram. So if you're interested, follow me on Instagram. You'll see that stuff pop up. Otherwise, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.